who've never seen anything like this before. Because there are two possible locations for the real Sodom and Gomorrah. And we're going to investigate all of the evidence, starting with Numera by the Salt Sea. In 1924, archaeologist Dr. Albright discovered just near the southeastern tip of the Salt Sea, the landscape was completely desolate almost as if something terrible had happened. Upon further inspection, he came to the conclusion that this was the location of the real Sodom and Gomorrah, and that the rising sea levels had actually covered the city ruins. 75 years later, a man called Ron Wyatt continued this research, and to his amazement, he found that these sulphur balls were everywhere. How do we know that they're made of sulphur? Well, Ron actually had the balls taken back to a laboratory in Knoxville, and there they were tested and they came back as 95.72% sulfur. Now, before you see what happens when we light one of these little guys, it's really important to remember that if you today visited Numera, you would find these sulfur balls everywhere. In fact, archaeologist Joel Kramer recently conducted a similar experiment and so did the Christian YouTuber Timo Shelley. So, watch what happens when these three men perform the same test and put a flame to these little chunks of brimstone. By the way, did you know if you look up the word brimstone in your dictionary, somewhere in that definition will also be the word sulphur. But here's the crazy part, these pale sulphur balls are found nowhere else in the world except in Numera. And could the reason for this be because it was only a one-time event when God's wrath fell on the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. But before I give you my opinion on this, and before I show you something totally mind-blowing, you need to see this evidence first. Apart from the millions of sulphur balls that are preserved between layers of sediment, this entire area, put simply, appears to be burnt. There are blackened rocks everywhere. Here, you can also see this chalk-like material, which is not found anywhere else in Israel. And beneath this ash, Ron claims to have found gold dust that was vaporised by very hot temperatures. But check this out, these swirling patterns are thought to be caused by thermal ionisation. If you ever see a building which has been faced under extreme temperatures, we're talking 5,000 degrees Celsius, you'll also see the same design. Because effectively, atoms are being energetically charged by these extreme temperatures to create this chemical reaction. Okay, let's ask the obvious question here. Isn't there another logical conclusion for all of this evidence? After all, sulphur, burnt ash, and all of these things, they could be found next to a, a volcano, can't they? You're right. But the problem with that line of thinking is that no volcanic activity has ever been reported in this region. But the biblical story of Abraham and Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah has been believed by religions and cultures for thousands of years. And even unbelievers are struggling to find another rational explanation for this singed wilderness. In 1980, Walter Rast, a totally secular archaeologist with no religious bias, he was working for the University of Indiana, and he performed many excavations on this site. And after looking at all the evidence, he even he stated that the only possible conclusion really could be the biblical accounts recorded in Genesis. Later, I'm going to tell you whether I think this is the real Sodom and Gomorrah. And I also want to draw your attention to this very interesting landmark. And I want you to see if you can guess which famous Bible character the locals claim it is. But can we just stay in Numera for one more moment? Moment, because I want to show you why Ron Wyatt and others believe this is where God's judgment fell on a rebellious people. They believe that the arrangements of the topography isn't natural, but rather hides clues to a previous civilization. For instance, the rock formations are at 90 degree angles, angular in shape, as if they were once buildings. Ron also believed that this was once an ancient sphinx, and this structure here could have been one of those mysterious cigarettes that we read about in history. The whole area, according to Ron, screams out it was once crushed by God's anger, and some people are even divided whether this configuration could have once been a pyramid. So, come on now, 
talk to me. Do you think what I've just shown you is enough evidence to convince you that this is the real Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, some people would argue that the next viewpoint, the next alternate location, the evidence for that is even stronger. In 2001, Dr. Steve Collins created a real stir in the archaeological world. He claimed that Sodom and Gomorrah was not in Numera, but rather in Tel El Haman in the Jordan Valley. Dr. Steve Collins, now driven by conviction, began an excavation on the site, and beneath the ground he discovered an ancient civilization that was suddenly wiped out. So what he did is he mapped out the lowest part of the upper city and there he descended a 2 by 2 meter probe into the ground to test how deep the site was. Once he got beneath the Iron Age, he reached the Bronze Age and there he found the most perplexing artifact. It was a storage jar but it was a glazed storage jar. Why is this so confusing? Because glazing was only invented around 1000 AD, years after the biblical account of Sodom. So Dr. Steve Collins thought, brilliant, that means that my entire archaeological dig has been messed up by newer artifacts. But when one of his friends saw it, he recognised it instantly. This wasn't a man-made glazing, no, this was Trinitite. Now, if you're also a little bit confused by that word, don't panic, because Dr. Steve had neither heard of this word, Trinitite. So his friend explained, Trinitite is where objects get crystallised with a glass-like layer when they are suddenly heated to over 4,000 degrees. It's the kind of thing you'd expect if an asteroid blasted in the middle of the desert. And sure enough, his friend was right. The pottery was tested in a lab and it came back that it was from the Bronze Age. And also it showed signs that it had been hit by a huge heat blast. So, it was official. Dr. Steve Collins had become a rock star, pun intended. And he had attracted the attention of 21 scholars who also believed the 400 square kilometers around Tel Haman had been wiped out in the blink of an eye by an asteroid or something huge. Before I tell you my thoughts on the location of Sodom and Gomorrah, it's critical that we do not overlook the rest of Dr. Steve Collins' evidence because he has quite literally been digging this area for almost two decades now. Over the years, Steve discovered the ground is very high in salinity. He found many melted materials and there was also a high concentration of salt. He and his team discovered thousands of Bronze Age pottery in the site. And check this out, this is a saddle kern. It was used to grind grain and unbelievably, they actually found pieces of burnt grain next to it. So what did they do? They had it tested. They put it under a carbon-14 test and the results were staggering. This burnt grain dated all the way back to 1700 BC minus 50, exactly the time frame of the Abrahamic period. Even the swale on the other side of the hill provided fascinating evidence. There Steve and his team found broken bricks that had not decomposed slowly over time, but had literally been blown off in one unexpected blast. And this matched the same direction that the roofs and the buildings that had shattered in the city above. I wonder what goes through your mind as you see and hear all of this. Here we have the exact time of the biblical account. And according to Dr. Steve Collins, we have the exact location and throughout the Bible the story of Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah is constantly referenced and not just in the Bible outside of other religions and in other texts this same story is mentioned often why could it be that all of this evidence points towards the fact that this event really did happen. Hey, whilst you figure out which you think is the most credible location for Sodom and Gomorrah, I've got to show you this. So, have you guessed which Bible character people believe this is? You've got it. Hole in one. They claim this is Lot's wife. I'm going to choose my words very carefully now, but personally, I believe this is more likely to be a tourist attraction rather than the actual Lot's wife. However, I might be wrong and it is 15 miles away from the Numera site. But the problem is, it's 9 feet tall and we know from preserved clothes that we can see in most museums that people were generally much shorter back in history. But whether it is or not, it does remind people of the story and it sends out a powerful message to the world. One word, compromise. Four times we see Lot and his family compromise on what God has spoken. The first time is 
is when the angels warn the family and say you need to get out. This city is coming under God's judgement. And what do Lot's son-in-laws do? They laugh. They treat it as if it's one big joke. Oh friends, how often do men and women mock and ignore God's messengers who stand out in the streets and cry out at the top of their voices, God's judgement is coming upon the disobedient. How often do they laugh at preachers in pulpits, laugh at our YouTube channels, write mean comments and they all treat the judgement of God as one big joke. The second compromise we see is instead of Lot heeding the voice of these angels, instead of Lot fearing the Lord God and seeing the severity of this situation, what did Lot do? He lingered. Oh my dear friends, some of you have lingered for far too long. Some of you have lingered for far too long in the pleasures of this life. You love the parties, you love the nightclubs, you love the bars, you love all of the trappings that this world can offer you. And God is telling you to flee for safety in the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. But some of you are not seeing the seriousness of this situation. Some of you are not seeing that just round the corner, God is going to consume this world and pour out his wrath in a blink of an eye. The third time we see compromise is when, just as we've heard, Lot was told to run to the mountains. In other words, you need to get as far away from this place as possible. But Lot thought that he knew better and he answered back and said, See now, this city is near enough to flee to and it is a little one. Please let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. I hear you say, I would never be as foolish as Lot. I would run a million miles away from Sodom and Gomorrah. There's no way I'd choose a little town nearby to live in. No way. And yet, many of you, you play games with God every single day. You say the same type of thing. It's only a little bit of blasphemy in that movie. It doesn't affect the whole thing. It's just a tiny little blasphemy. It's okay, God doesn't mind me watching it. It's only a little white lie. It doesn't hurt anyone. In fact, it's easier for me to tell that than to tell the truth. Oh, it's only a little look at that woman at the beach. It doesn't hurt anyone. No one saw it. Just a little look. It's only a little rude joke here and there. You know, come on, we need to have a laugh every now and then as Christians. It's just a little bit. And what you forget when you keep doing that day after day, you're forgetting that when Jesus Christ died on that cross, he didn't die for a little piece of you. He died for the whole thing, that you might lay down your life in sacrifice on the altar on the throne of God, and you might live in total obedience to him. The fourth compromise is what we've just been thinking about. The angels specifically said that no one should look behind them. If they did, they'd be ruined instantly. And Lot's wife, although she left with Lot and the family, she realised that she'd left something back in Sodom. What had she left? Her heart. And so this woman, even though she'd been delivered from Sodom, she hadn't been delivered from Sodom, if that makes sense. And so what did she do? She looked behind her in sadness to know this place that was so dear to her was about to be consumed by fire and brimstone. And the moment she did that, she was taken up into a pillar of salt. Listen to me, God does not change. And even today, God takes it very seriously when he commands us to look to Christ and to live, to turn from this world and all of its pleasures and focus on Christ. If any of us would shrink back and look back at this world, and look back at these pleasures, the Lord God takes it very seriously. You say, but this was the Old Testament. Well, I'll give you a verse right now in the New Testament that sounds awfully similar. Luke 9 verse 62, but Jesus said to them, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Perhaps I'm speaking to you right now at this very moment in your life. You've got your eyes on the things of this world. You've got your eyes on women, on men, on the praise of man perhaps, on being rich, on being successful. The things of God hold very little interest. There's very little thought of God and his word in your mind. If that's you, I want you to know something. It's still not too late for you. At one time, I thought like that. At one time, I was mesmerized by the things of this world. But I want you to know that God brought me out of that. And right now, God, 
God has not sent down his second fire on this earth. Right now, God has not rained down fire and brimstone. There is still an opportunity to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and to lay hold of faith in him. But if that's you, whatever you do right now, do not do the same thing as Lot. Please, please. Do not linger, but turn to Christ immediately. The fury and judgment that was poured out on Sodom and Gomorrah was only a drop in the ocean compared to what Christ endured at Calvary. You see, at Sodom and Gomorrah, it was only the condemnation of two cities. But when Christ was on that cross, he suffered the condemnation, the judgment for every city that has ever existed, every civilization, all the sins of the world were laid on Christ Jesus and there God poured out all of his wrath on Jesus Christ so that we can be forgiven. The Bible says that Jesus was the propitiation for our sins. Now that's a big word but it effectively means that Christ stood in the gap. Here we are standing here and we've got all of our sins that cling to us and he is God's wrath and it's coming for us but Jesus Christ stands in the middle and he absorbs that wrath and he turns it in another direction just like if you hold up a mirror into the sunlight it will reflect the light in another direction so the Lord Jesus Christ he absorbed that beam of wrath and he turned it he reflected it into something beautiful into a beam of forgiveness and this is what i truly believe if you put your trust in the lord jesus christ who died for your sins and rose from the dead on the third day i believe there's a verse in the bible that we can also know and hold for certainty in my favorite chapter in the bible hosea chapter 11. it says how can i give you up ephraim how can I hand you over, Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I set you like Zeboiahim? My heart churns within me. My sympathy is stirred. Did you know where those two towns, Adma and Zeboiahim, were located? Inside Sodom and Gomorrah. And here God is saying to his people, the Jewish people, but I do believe if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, this is a promise for us as well. He's saying that I cannot rain fire and brimstone on you, my people. I love you so much. Even though you've been rebellious, even though you've been unfaithful to me, even though you've messed up, I love you so much. I have so much compassion for you. And I'm asking whoever's listening right now, can you claim onto that promise yourself? Do you know that you're hiding in the love of God, the one who loved you, the one who sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for you? Because mark my words, there is a seriousness. The lesson we've just seen shows us that one day there is a judgment coming and there is a day when one day God's love will never be found again. For those unbelievers who've chosen to reject the Lord Jesus Christ, there will come a day when no matter how much you search for it, you will never find the love and forgiveness of God. Just like Sodom and Gomorrah was put down into the dust and it was never rebuilt again, there'll come a day when you will never be able to rise again and your mercy will be cut off. So perhaps you've been waiting for my answer. Where do I think the real Sodom and Gomorrah is? Well, please, please don't get angry with me. But when I first began this video, before I began it, in fact, I was certain it was in Numera. When I looked at all of the sulfur balls and I thought, how else could there be millions of these in the area? There's no other logical explanation. But the more I delved into this research, the more I looked at the evidence that Dr. Stephen Collins presented and the fact that all of these things can be dated back to the exact time period of Lot, I was left sort of speechless. And on this one, I know you might want an answer, but I'm sorry, I truly cannot call it. And remember this, I'm just learning like you, and this is probably the bit that's really going to irritate people. But even if there was no evidence for Sodom and Gomorrah, no physical evidence, I'd still believe it. Why? because God said it happened. And if God said it happened, well, that's good enough for me. After all, the Bible does tell us that we walk by faith and not by sight. By the way, back in 2019, when I first started making these types of videos, I actually preached a message on my favorite chapter in the Bible. If you've never seen that video, go and check it out now. It might just bless you.